What's up YouTube? Thanks for tuning in. This is going to be a special video, something a lot different than I normally do because I got over 3 million minutes of watch time and 30,000 new subscribers in the last 28 days. That's incredible. So thank you very much. I really appreciate all y'all who commented, liked, and shared the video with your friends. It means a lot to me. Uh, so this video is going to be a lot different. This is going to be uh, uh, Get to Know Me, a subscriber Q&A for all the people who sent me a question. And towards the end, I'm going to do a guitar tutorial on my technique, which a lot of you have asked for. So let's get into it. My name is Justin Cover Dunning. Uh, Cove is my nickname. Covergeist is my grandmother's maiden name and married name combined. And I've always just used that in my art and my music. Uh, I started my musical journey um, at the conservatory in Tempe, Arizona, where I got an audio engineering degree. From there, I started working at Quad Studios here in Nashville, Tennessee, where I got to have some cool stories. I set up the microphones on Taylor Swift's first record, and I bought Juvenile a cheeseburger. Uh, I had a slice of Dolly Parton's coconut cake and a lot of other fun stories from that chapter in my life. From there, I ended up in Denver, Colorado. We're skipping over a lot, but I made some records in Denver. And then I recently decided to come back to Nashville, Tennessee, where I'm writing my fourth record. So I have three original albums that you can purchase, stream on every platform, so iTunes, Spotify, and even the jukebox. So every AMI jukebox in the world has my records on it, which is really cool. I've had uh, one of my songs, Whiskey, Weed, and Women, uh, received a lot of radio play, but cooler than that is being able to go to my favorite bar, the Red Door Saloon, and play my records that I worked so hard on. So if you get a chance, you like these rap covers I'm doing or these country covers, uh, check out my original music too if you get a chance. Um, so I guess let's get into it. Let's get see what some of these questions are. Sebastian Rojas. Where are you from, Sebastian? Uh, how long did it take you to perfect that guitar flip you do? Well, that's, that's kind of a gimmick that I'm doing. Uh, it's a recent thing that I've gotten good at, but I remember watching videos of Jimi Hendrix talking about gimmicks, and he kept saying the word gimmicks. You know, and he would play with his teeth and his tongue, and he'd play behind his head, and he'd play behind his back. And just showmanship stuff, stuff that's not technical or musical at all, but it's just kind of fun to watch. I've always wanted to light my guitar on fire too, but I just haven't had the money to do it. Uh, or the fire department. But yeah, that guitar flip's a recent thing. Some people think I do it too much, but I don't care. It's fun. Something fun. Let's see. Scott C., why does it always rain on me? Scott C. from Edinburgh, Scotland. They named the whole country after you. Well, uh, I hear Scotland and the Amazon are the rainiest places in the world, so maybe you could start an umbrella company or something. <laughs> Thanks for your question. Mr. Cove, my name is Rakesh from India. I enjoy listening to your covers. Wanted to know your main influences. Also, are you planning to do anything in rock or metal genre? Yeah, for sure. If you were to listen to my original records, uh, punk rock, and rock and roll and heavy metal is definitely a major influence on those records. Uh, I, I have a couple acoustic covers of some Metallica and some Motley Crue and some Guns N' Roses songs. Um, but influences, uh, I would say everyone from Bob Dylan to Jay-Z to Stevie Ray Vaughan to Tommy Dorsey. Uh, you name it, I like it. Good music is good music. Thanks for your question. Larry Shepard, being a guitarist myself, what is your favorite guitar? Larry from Toledo. Well, I don't really have a favorite brand, uh, but I do like finding a guitar in a pawn shop. I try and find something around $200 to $500 uh, because I tend to break guitars with this technique. You'll put a hole in it pretty quick. Um, but as far as electrics go, I like a Tele. I like the hollow body guitars. Um, uh, 
brand is not necessarily important to me, but I definitely do prefer acoustic guitar because with electric, you can't necessarily take a amp around with you everywhere, especially around a party or a campfire. But an acoustic guitar, you can literally take it anywhere. Thanks for your question. Summit Singh, I hope I pronounced your name right, S-U-M-I-T. How do you feel about your talent being recognized by YouTube? Since you are finally in recommendations, how are you planning on keeping subscribers engaged and also lure new subs? That is a fantastic question. One I do not have all the answers to, but uh, I'm hoping for some direction from my subscribers. Let me know what you want to hear. Do you want to hear a new album? Do you want to see music videos? Do you want to see specific songs? Uh, I've looked into, you know, getting some better equipment. Right now I'm just using my phone. Some people have said that they like the old YouTube vibe where I'm not cutting out my breath or like putting a crazy thumbnail. Uh, so maybe I'm just going to keep it a phone. Maybe I could just keep it, you know, maybe get a phone sponsorship so filmed with this kind of phone. Uh, I don't know. Um, how do I plan on keeping subscribers engaged and lure new subscribers? That's a tough question, man. I don't, I don't know. This channel has always been for me. I make music for me because it makes me happy. And you guys, if you're planning to, you should do that too. You'll learn that pe even people hate Garth Brooks. Some people hate Tupac. You, you just can't get around it. At the end of the day, you just got to make music for you and do what makes you happy. So that's what I'm going to try and do, I guess. Just try and live my best life, and then hopefully y'all want to come along for the ride. Thanks for your question. Uh, Christophe Savoyer, comprende. I can't, I'm sorry, I mispronounced your name. Hello, Co. Could you do a tutorial on Shake That by Eminem and Nate Dogg? Yeah, for sure. That's actually the same riff as that I'm using in Without Me and I'm Shady. Uh, you'll find uh, that I play about seven to eight different riffs if I can't figure out the sample or the song doesn't have a chord progression, really. I'll go to like seven or eight different riffs that are a derivative of an original song that make it easy to spit the lyrics over it. Party Boy 7, can you do the Jay and Silent Bob song? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. A million times yes. I love that movie. I love that song. I'll do the Jay and Silent Bob song ASAP. Thanks for asking. Uh, Gimto Rory, what's a shout out? What's up, dude? Where are you from? Next time, let me know. You have a question. <laughs> uh, David Z, how long have you played guitar for? Respect from London. Uh... I am 30 years old and I started playing guitar when I was 13. I remember watching Back to the Future with Michael J. Fox and he gets up on stage and he says, you're going to hate this, but your kids will love it. And then he starts playing Johnny Be Good uh, by Chuck Berry. And when I saw that, man, I knew I wanted to play guitar. Uh, my mother had me in piano lessons since I was a kid, but I, uh, I knew when I saw that scene in that movie, that's what made me want to play guitar. All right. Hey, Cove. Chris from Ohio. What are some of your most used chords? How on earth do you remember all the lyrics? Have you ever considered streaming on Twitch? Uh, most used chords? Hey, man, if you're starting out, G, C, and D. That's all you need to know. And that's probably 90% of modern music. There are those three chords. What Bob Dylan said, all you need is three chords and the truth. How do I remember all the lyrics? Well, some of them I have memorized. Other ones I hand write the lyrics beforehand. Like I'll go to a website, see how they're written, hand write them. And then if that doesn't work, then I'll print them out and I'll read them. Uh, streaming on Twitch? Yeah, I've definitely thought about that. I'm a video game enthusiast. Uh, I'm playing NBA 2K and Fallout 76 right now. And that'd be fun to stream. Uh, I know that Post Malone did a lot of video game streaming too, so maybe that's a cool outlet besides music to reach people. Thanks for your question. Admar Rivas, 
I hope I pronounced your name right. Uh, are you self-taught or did you take classes? Yeah, man. Uh, I had piano lessons when I was growing up and then I had a couple guitar lessons growing up and I found that, you know, I'm a student, uh, always a student, never a teacher, meaning you, you can always learn something, man. Uh, even if somebody's not as far along in their musical journey as you, you can learn something from them. You can learn, they might have a cool line in a song that they wrote, or they might play guitar a certain way or make you think of music differently. So definitely uh, not self-taught. I try and learn from everybody. So thanks for your question. Michael Thomas, Mike in California. Who inspires you to create the types of covers you do? If not, what sparked you to begin creating country covers of popular rap songs? Well, I'm not trying to do a country version. I think because I'm white and playing acoustic guitar, people are assuming that I'm like uh, super country or something. But I just, I noticed on YouTube that there were a lot of videos that had a lot of views of people playing popular rap songs, modern songs on guitar. It's kind of like a genre on YouTube almost. So I'm like, dude, I could do that. But um, influences, man, everybody, you know, like I said, from Bob Dylan to Tupac. Uh, I'm also inspired by songwriters that I know here in town. Clint Daniels is a great songwriter. He's written for George Strait and Eric Church. And my friend Joshua O'Dine also plays with this acoustic percussion. And you should definitely check out both of those artists. Uh, HGC, Talker, how long have you been playing guitar? Probably 17 years. Um, Deacon wants to break the internet with a collaboration. Always down to break the internet. Uh, Yuri Dobrin from Voronezh, Russia. What are your interests besides art? Do you have another profession? Yeah, man. I, I find that you know, music is my passion. It'll never go away till my dying day. I'm going to be playing music. It's in my blood. It's in my soul. Um, but that being said, you need to balance your life with other things. Like, I am currently trying to eat better, uh, work out and exercise more, and live a healthier lifestyle instead of sex, drugs, and rock and roll, which I've done for too long. So that is one of my hobbies, is trying to get, you know, in shape. The outdoors, I love the outdoors, fishing and hunting. Um, I also have a passion for computers, and I have some uh, computer certifications. So that's also how I make some money. Uh, thanks for that question. And fun fact, my great-great-grandfather immigrated to America from Saratov, Russia. So I've always wanted to see that country. Thanks for your question. And thanks for writing in English. I'm getting all these uh, messages in Russian that I can't read. I'm like, what is this? You know, because it's a different alphabet. But thank you. Uh, Tim O'Laughlin, how does one hook up for a collaboration? I live in Modesto, California. Well, a lot of people have asked that, and I want to figure out a cool way to do it. Obviously, I can't make a track with every single person but I think a cool idea would be to like on this half of the screen have me doing the instrumental and then on this half of the screen we could flip through like 16 bars of different artists that want to collaborate this way so like it could be like an hour-long video if there's enough people who wanted to collaborate but people have asked for an instrumental of my acoustic uh, riffs and people have also asked a lot of people have asked to do a collaboration so I think that'd be a cool way to combine those ideas if you have more concepts let me know appreciate it thanks for reaching out black spot Jesse here what are some of your influences I see you have punk ska rock hip-hop and country what bands influence you and what style do you enjoy the most um, I don't enjoy one style more than the other. I love playing uh, these acoustic rap songs and having a cypher at a party a lot. I love doing a rock show with the amp turned to 11 and you could just feel the 
waves moving in the air and you can smell the amplifier tubes burning. I don't, I don't necessarily have a favorite genre. I like all of them. I'm really into big band music right now. I got all my grandpa's records, so he, he liked uh, big band, big band music. Herb Alpert and the Tijuana Brass is one of the best albums of all time. Check that one out. I am not going to be able to pronounce this name, uh, but it's V from Greece. V-O-U-K-E-F-A-L-A-S-T-S-O-P-A-S. -S -S. Man, I can't even speak English that good. But V from Greece, what is your goal with these videos? I mean, it's fun, fun and money, something like a musical career. Keep rocking, man. Greetings from Greece. Hey, well, you know, my goal is to just keep on doing what I'm doing, have fun. You know, I've gotten some offers for some shows and stuff like that uh, out of this. But, I mean, my goal is just to keep on doing what I'm doing, have fun, uh, play music for me, and hopefully you all want to come along for the ride. Gemto Rory wanted a name shout out. Um, Prit from Estonia. Preet, maybe. How can I have a father like you? I'm 24, but it doesn't matter. Well, uh, if your mother's single, uh, I'm single. And if she's ready to mingle, uh, I could definitely be your dad real quick. Um, moving on. Lucas Soho, what rapper most inspires you from Sao Paulo, Brazil. Fun fact, I actually have some family in Brazil. I've been to Sao Paulo and Rio and Campinas and Limeira and Paraty. I love it there. It's my favorite. Uh, what rapper most inspired me? Obviously Tupac. Right off the bat, I watched a Tupac documentary when I was a little kid and I'm like, damn, that guy was a badass. And so I ended up getting a Tupac tattoo and Never looked back. After that, I, I really got into Eminem, obviously. And then currently, I'm really into a rapper named Daylight. Check him out. D-A-Y-L-Y-T. He's great. And obviously, I'm inspired by uh, rappers and people in hip-hop that I'm surrounded with. There are some people that I work with that are also rappers that I'm trying to collaborate with on my new record. Let's see, Marcus, how do you decide which songs you're going to cover? Keep up the great work, Marcus from Hadamar, Germany. Uh, how do I pick a song? Sometimes if I hear a song and I want to listen to it all night, then I know that i got to learn it. Um, also, if it's a number one song, I definitely try and figure out that song because I have a project where I'm trying to record every number one hit since 1940. Um, so if it's number one, I'll choose it. Sometimes if, you know, I, I wanted to do Eminem's entire catalog at one point, but I don't know. If it has over 100 million views, too, I kind of look into it and try to do it. Even if it's not a good song, you know, I, I figure that that could siphon some views into my original music, which is what I really want people to listen to. All right. Thanks for your questions. If you want to do another video like this, let me know. Uh, let's do a bit of a guitar lesson, a uh, tutorial on the technique. All right, I'm in tune. Last time I did this, I got all, all the way up to this part in the video and I was out of tune. But, um, which I'm not necessarily in tune too. If you're trying to play along to a YouTube video of me playing, I, I'm not to A440, I just tune to the room unless I'm playing with a band. So first things first, I play with a quarter. As many of you noticed, uh, I could never find a pick, but I always needed money. So that gives it a nice snare sound when you hit the guitar. And then for the kick, I use my palm. And if you're just starting out, uh, this is gonna blister and bleed. I've got a scar now, so it doesn't do that anymore, but pretty much the whole concept uh, would be kick, strum, snare, strum, kick, strum, snare, strum. And you kind of mix up the picking and the strumming and the one and the two in between. So see 
see how it sounds without chords? And then you can add chords. That pick scrape is kind of like, I guess that kind of comes from Randy Rhodes, you know, where, where he goes. Where he does crazy training, does that cool pick scrape at the beginning. But to do the, the cool pick scrape, it's kind of, you kind of got to make some noise for a while. You, you won't be able to get it right away, but just try and copy in your mind what a DJ scratch sounds like. Or, uh, you know, there's all kinds of different sounds you can make with the guitar. I mean, these sound different too. So you can try and combine all these different elements to make something that's unique. But the percussion, you might also mess up the bracing in your guitar. I've broken a lot of guitars, so be careful. You will also probably warp the pit guard and you'll probably put a hole in it after uh, if you do it as much as I have so anyways let's do somebody asked for the shake that riff uh, which is also the same as the without me riff because it's the melody to I'm shady and it's one of the uh, like eight riffs that I do but it's E F sharp G A B and C and I'm doing like a power chord without that middle one so I'm doing the octave. So and I'm doing kick, snare, kick, snare, kick, snare, kick, snare, kick. So for when you're starting out, probably just try to do it something like that while you're watching TV or something and then uh, try doing the chords separately then combine them come and kill me while my name's hot shoot me 25 times in the same spot I got a generation brainwashed Pop pills, smoke pot, tell your brain rot Purple haze, that's it, raindrop Spiked a bunch of the party and I'm drinking a pop uh, Another thing about playing is I, I use 13s So 13s is the gauge of this string and why I did that is because I read in an interview somewhere that Stevie Ray Vaughan said he played with 13s on the electric, which are even harder to play. But he's, he said that uh, he wanted the struggle. He wanted it to be hard. He wanted to get better quicker, too. Because you notice if you play on heavier strings, it's uh, easier to bend on lighter gauge strings. So if you like this video, you want to see more of this Q&A style format, and then uh, if you'd like to do another guitar tutorial on the different riffs, like... Or... Actually, the riff to Gypsy Eyes, but just inter like reimagined. That's my first tattoo, Gypsy Eyes. But, anyways, if you like this video, uh, let me know if you want to see more stuff like this. Uh, this is definitely different for me. Um, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for all my new subscribers and listeners. I really appreciate it. Check out my original music, and I hope y'all have a great weekend. Peace out.